Hello everybody, welcome to this, this video made by uh, Lancaster and Morecambe Trade Union Council. As you know we had to cancel the May Day March and Rally this year because of the coronavirus. So we've decided to make this video so that May Day does not go unmarked. My name's Eugene Doherty, I'm President of the Trade Union Council. I don't know whether you can see this t-shirt, but it says, Migration is not a crime. Where would we be without all the doctors and nurses from around the world that make up our NHS? The virus is not a Chinese virus, as Donald, the racist Donald Trump would say. The virus is a product of the system. Workers have had to fight to make sure that the lockdown is done properly. And it is workers that are doing their best to keep people safe and protected. The Tory government have failed to do this and thousands of people have lost their lives unnecessarily. In particular today, we want to remember all the health workers and key workers who have done all their best to keep people well. They have put their lives at risk and some of them have lost their lives, sacrificed their lives. 150 doctors and nurses are dead. We face two existential crises at the moment, the virus and, in my opinion, more importantly, climate change. Climate change was to be the theme of this year's May Day and we've decided to keep it. One way or another, the system is killing us. First up are the workers and the poor. In this time of crisis, we've got two slogans. Remember the dead and fight for the living and system change, not climate change. Hello, happy May Day. I'm Anna Oaksmonger um, and this is a song I wrote just after the general election last year and it's called The Red Wall. Back to the drawing board Power up Get in, get stuck And next year We'll eat your shitty landlord I'm not down Not yet Anyhow Cause there's work to do The world's turn around There's power in The union Don't let the bastards Get you down The red wall is you and me Everybody who believes the lines we draw on death and green, the centuries solidarity, the miners on the battle path, the gays who said they shall not stop. Hear a million people march, we're never going home. We'll be the red wall. When you're trying to write a better story So I'm not giving up Just cause Laura Koonsberg is a Tory I'm all in for the times we win and For the times we lose it all, lose everything and The whole thing's fucked, the flowers cut We're still working for the spring Everybody who believes the lines we draw on death and green, the centuries of solidarity, the miners on the battle path, the games who said they shall not stop. Hear a million people march, we're never going home. We'll be the Red Wall. They named it communism so they could declare it dead. Hope is an event. And if you're building mortuaries, there's names that I'd suggest. Cause the order is dying, and what's living is red. The red wall is you and me, it's 
everybody who believes the lines we draw on death and breathe the centuries solidarity the miners on the battle path the gays who said they shall not starve hear a million people march we're never going home we'll be the red wall Hiya, I'm Thomas and I'm an activist and coordinator for Lancaster Youth for Environment. One of the biggest reasons why I got into environmental activism is due to the massive effect climate change will have on the working class in future. This is why I'm standing in solidarity with the May Day protests. Lancaster Youth for Environment started with one successful petition by Rosie Mills, which got the council to declare a climate emergency in 2018. We went on to create a protest every month in the form of a school strike. We're doing this because of the massive threat the climate emergency has to everyone. After the coronavirus lockdown is over, the climate will continue to change at the expense of living standards all over the world. Changing climates will cause job losses in all sectors for so many reasons. Heat stress, ocean acidification, pollution and more. It won't go away overnight. Huge industries are the biggest issue at the moment. Transport, animal farming and en embedded emissions in trade. We must address these with wider system change, which groups like ours are putting pressure on the government to implement. It's not entirely up to the working class to solve the huge issues of climate change. We need higher up regulations of industries and people like you signing petitions and emailing MPs to fight for the change we all need. Hello, um, my name's Amelia. I'm a member of the Socialist Workers Party Lancaster and Morecambe branch. I'm also a sixth form student, so that's why today I'll be talking about um, school strikes for climate and the pressing need for climate justice in general. A phrase that I hear a lot um, in discussions about climate change is that we're all in the same boat. I have a problem with this phrase because I do think it's categorically not true. Um, while the world's wealthiest will profit off the destruction of the planet, um, working class people all over the world are already paying the price for the actions of irresponsible corporations. Uh, climate change impacts agriculture, food security, water security. Um, it increases exposure to extreme weather events, which damages people's homes and people's property. Um, it can even impact the geographical range of certain vector-borne diseases, especially diseases carried by mosquitoes, um, diseases like malaria and dengue fever, which can be very, very damaging um, if not treated correctly and people don't have access to healthcare. Um, all of these changes will hit the most vulnerable people in the society the hardest. Um, unfortunately, it will be survival of the richest. This is why it is important to champion climate activism, um, even in the current coronavirus crisis. Um, in my opinion, as far as existential threats go, the climate crisis far outweighs COVID-19, especially for my generation who will have to live with the fallout of um, global warming for the next several decades, centuries, you know, who really knows? Um, so for everyone's sake, I urge workers to stand together in the face of the ongoing destruction of the planet and for climate activists to recognise and be inclusive of the struggles of um, the most disadvantaged groups in society. Stand in solidarity with student strikers uh, and demand change from those who continually abuse the planet, uh, putting millions of lives at risk. Um, we may not all be in the same boat, but that doesn't mean we can't become an armada um, and face this threat together and fight back against a destructive system. Uh, so solidarity and happy May Day. Thank you for listening. Hi, Tina Rothery here from the Lancashire Nannas. May Day Rally 2020, unlike any other, a virtual one, very strange. I deeply miss what I know would be happening now if we were all together. The comradeship, the warmth, the hugs, the just being close, all of which I think we must all be missing so very much. I know certainly I am. And so virtual is brilliant and helpful but it will never replace that incredible human touch warmth and solidarity you have amongst people who are seeking better and that's what i see the people who usually gather at may day as trying to do throughout history workers rights have been a paramount interest and we've had to fight every step of the way to get them and it's no different from today except maybe one 
focus that has been good in this is that the light is shining on who are the key workers in society and maybe we can come out of this valuing them differently. It was never about skilled or unskilled. It was about what really mattered, what was a genuine job of genuine worth and value to the community. Whether you're collecting bins, stocking shelves, or saving lives in a hospital, all of these people have suddenly become heroes and they're on a front line and they're gonna win this battle. And that messaging is quite horrific, really, that it shouldn't be like that. We are a wealthy nation that should have been prepared for this. My niece is returning to nursing and she is not a soldier. She's not in the army. She doesn't see her job as being a war. She sees it as a caring profession and that's why she chose it because she dearly wants to take ease suffering and help people not go onto a war zone or be told she's in, in the army or that she's you know, a hero. That was never her reasoning. And I'm sure the same stands for many people, but we've turned it into a front line and a battle and heroics because we put them in so much risk and harm's way. I say we, of course, I mean the government. I think that um, this time of reckoning almost is very unique and it should be seized that when we come back out of this, we don't go back to some imperfect and totally flawed normal, that we come out of this better than before and aiming for better than before, because what's happening now is just not good enough. The government, in my opinion, is guilty of corporate manslaughter. When the staff die, they have not been taken care of in the way that they should have been. It was negligence. There was no duty of care. They were not protected with adequate personal equipment. And I think we can't let that go. I think that has to be followed up. And I think this has to be analysed. And we were told on the news, oh, yes, but the time for analysis will come once the crisis is over. But this crisis is killing people on a minute by minute basis. So the analysis has to be ongoing and current if we're to try and prevent any more needless deaths, particularly amongst those that we ask to care for the sick. I suppose... What I'm getting out of this time is the realization of how much is unnecessary now. You know, if you were to walk a high street, most shops wouldn't have been important anyway. Not vital, you know. I see some gains. I see our local farm delivering direct to the community and cutting out the middleman who was ripping him off anyway, the supermarkets. I see lots of gains could be made in finding a better future, in looking at ways that perhaps the Green New Deal as a template was already marking out for us with more localized services and ways of tackling a future that don't involve flogging ourselves to get nine to five in jobs that produce nothing of worth to a community. A universal basic income also, that's come into the discussion now. Of course, that would be brilliant. Take away people's fear of dying of hunger or homelessness. Give everyone a baseline above survival level that is guaranteed and prevents that fear and need in society. And to look at things like how much we value our time with our family, although perhaps a little on overload at the moment, um, but there may be a four day working week, a lot more telecommuting, we're using Zoom now. You know, there are loads of ways that we're seeing that the future could be very different from the past. Everyone's enjoying the air, the air is crisp and clean, the skies are blue. If you're under a flight path, you've just rediscovered the sound of birdsong. Everything could be lovelier and better if we hold the government to account on this and keep up what we do anyway, our activism. For me, I'm finding it particularly challenging to be trapped indoors, doing as I'm told by my government and finding myself in agreement that I should. But I want to fight back and I haven't quite found my way yet. But it will come. I think that's another lesson I'm learning from this is that we should be gentle with ourselves and what we expect of ourselves. So that would be my, my wish going forward is that we remain united. We continue to hold the government to account, but we find better ways to have a better future than the past has been. Happy May Day. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, as you can see, we're still in our offices. We're still working out in the bay, still open, still providing support. As Rob says, we are still open. We're doing one-to-ones over the phone for the most vulnerable people. 
We're a farmland that's always open for mental health support. And we're working with Chef's Cater in North West to help get food, food parcels out. So COVID-19 has um, presented us with uh, problems that no risk assessment would bring about, I think. Um, we've not got the up-to-date IT equipment to be able to deal with what we're dealing with. So we're currently trying to fill out funding bids to um, get some better IT equipment. Um, the need of people's completely changed. Um, we've had to cancel Morecambe Pride. We've delayed Lancaster Pride, which we're hoping to put on in September. Um, and at the moment, we've got a lot of problems with um, what I would foresee is hidden harm. Um, some people used to go to school to escape violence at home. Um, and now people aren't at school. There are some people who are trapped in environments where the parents aren't welcoming of the sexuality or gender identity. Um, we've got to look at how do we support these types of people. Um, and that's really difficult when everybody's on lockdown. Um, we foresee in the future there's going to be massive problems with mental health, um, substance misuse, um, long-term effects of social isolation. We know domestic violence has gone up. Um, we are trying to put things in place for how we can support people. Um, and then we've got in the papers this week, you've got Liz Truss, who's the Minister for Women and Equalities and the Secretary of State for International Trade, um, who's threatening the future for all young trans people. Um, absolutely disgraceful of a government um, to start talking about things like this. Um, at the back of what is the most life-threatening situation in the last 50 years. Um, so yeah, we're stand with everybody. Um, you know, one of our volunteers, unfortunately, committed suicide in January, um, and we're still trying to do something uh, for Emily now. Um, life's quite hard for everybody, I think, at the moment. Um, let's hope we can all stay in touch with each other and try and make the best out of the situation. This is a new song that I've just written. It's called Love You Species. Inside the blood, it lives inside the brain. I'm looking for the bottom. Where's the bottom? There's no bottom to the endless rage. But all oh, my species, I love you anyway. Oh, my species, love you. And I've learned things from what I didn't sever I've met all my friends in rainy weather A list of what has died Summer like a government Is keeping us inside And all my favourite places Haven't heard from me in weeks But I hope they know our plans for them The avenues and streets Yeah, one day we can meet Outside Nowhere to hide Nowhere to find each other
each other One day we can be prepared I'm running scared Cause what's tied it won't recover I've never loved a virus I've only loved the roar I've never loved the man Who sends the workers off to war that every wave that batters in does something to the shore And every day I hate you, I just love my people more The nurse is on a dying wage, saw my grandma better My posties held all my letters Now I know that when the bin collectors came They were caring for the half of me I always threw away It lives inside the blood, it lives inside the brain I'm looking for the bottom, where's the bottom? There's no bottom to the endless rage But oh my species, I love you anyway to record something and this is a song I wrote a few years ago. It's a song of hope which if we need anything on this May Day it's hope. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully this inspires. <laughs> I 
good day to tell the world that they'll be better coming soon. International Memorial Day, 28th of April, is when we remember those killed at or by work. May Day celebrates the work that all workers do. COVID-19 has focused everyone's minds on the link between health and safety at work and wider public health, and how essential key workers are to the very fabric of society. It's shown that we need the NHS, critical to fighting the pandemic, and also we need cleaners, shop workers, delivery and bus drivers, postal workers, and our own members in education. Staff in schools have not only continued to care for vulnerable children and children of key workers in term time, but also beyond, recognising the need and rising to new challenges, adding food parcel production and delivery to our ongoing activities. Local hubs have been set up to support children from small groups of neighbouring schools. Local head teachers have been at the forefront of supporting the families in the communities. Local supply members have been central in the negotiations with the agencies that they work through in our schools, as well as shaping national advice. Local officers have constantly been pushing the local authority at County Hall to improve its provision for all. And new guidance has this week been produced for how to support pupils and staff both at home and when they return to their schools eventually, to cope with the tremendous stresses that all are under now, and may still be for weeks, if not months more. We have also gained nationally the latest admission that PPE for educators is essential and new resources have been promised and are being made available in Lancashire. Starting for special schools, but also for other settings where maintaining social distancing will be particularly difficult. It's our demands too that have helped push the expanded rollout, though still as yet insufficient for testing of all key workers. As local secretary, I'm proud that the National Education Union, the NEU, has been relentlessly looking after the health, safety and welfare and lives of children and staff across the district and we celebrated that ongoing commitment this year on International Workers Memorial Day and we celebrate on May Day the work that all educators do around the world. Knowledge is power. Solidarity. Hi, my name is Nils Markusson. I'm speaking uh, on behalf of UCU, the University and College Union, the Lancaster University branch. It might not be obvious, but higher and further education is a frontier of marketization of what used to be public sector activity. Uh, and as a result, we've had to fight uh, industrial disputes over the last three years from 2018 to 2020. We've been fighting over pensions, which aren't too bad, but they are under attack uh, by a fund management that seems to be out of control and out to please the financial sector rather than uh, labor or even employers. Uh, so we fought, we struck for 14 days in 2018, uh, but the dispute wasn't resolved. So in 2019, last year, we struck again. This time we also struck over four other issues. Uh, job security was really central to us. A lot of the teaching that goes on at Lancaster University is done by people on fixed term or casual contracts, for example. We fought over workloads. Locally here, investments have gone into the wrong kinds of buildings, not teaching spaces. So we've taken on more students, uh, but we don't have rooms enough to teach them. So we've had to teach into the evenings, which is not good for neither students nor staff. Uh, we thought of a gender pay gap. Lancaster University is one of the biggest gender pay gaps in the sector, but also the race pay gap, etc. Uh, we thought of a pay which has been eroded over the last 15 years. So we spent another 22 days on strike this winter. Many days were cold and rainy on the picket line. But we also had great teach outs um, and we were warmed by all the solidarity we received from other unions, from other various political parties, from individuals. So thank you everyone who supported us. The dispute is still not resolved. And just as we came off the picket line, COVID happened in the UK. Uh, and we've had to refocus our our efforts on that. It's still a, still the same inequalities we're fighting, um, and job security is still a still a priority. Some people have already some people on fixed term contracts 
have already lost their contracts and haven't been able to renew them due to the pandemic. But we are working to defend job security as best we can. And all this is because of marketization, right? The sector is increasingly relying on a casualized workforce, um, which gives the sector some flexibility to let people go when it needs it, right? And allows it to uh, overspend on the wrong kinds of buildings. We need a different education policy for the sector, for the country, uh, which is less about competition markets and more about job security, collaboration and solidarity. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm David Barnes. I'm Secretary of Lancaster Morecambe Trade Union Council. And I'm here just to give you a little bit of background information about our uh, organisation and the work we do. Trades councils, or more properly, <coughs> trade union councils, um, are a local gathering meeting of delegates from local trade union branches who live or perhaps work in a district and we meet and support each other in disputes, agree in joint campaigns on issues such as health, education, welfare, transport um, and those of interest in the local wider community. Um, in turn we can affiliate to local and national organisations um, and such as we do on uh, particularly anti-racism work and climate change and for those organisations we have perhaps a particular affinity to or fondness for such as the Working Class Movement Library in Salford or Local Pensioners Campaign Group. Um, Trades Council's history goes back quite a long way to the mid-19th century and they were instrumental in setting up um, the TUC we know today, but since then have perhaps ploughed their own furrow as it were, um, particularly and particularly seen as a bit more radical than the mainstream trade union movement. Um, we are guided by an annual conference which decides on campaigns on some of the issues that I've already mentioned um, and supporting minorities is quite an important part of Trades Council's ethos and work. Um, we local branches can call upon us to support them in disputes, um, to show solidarity at picket lines, to be involved in their publicity campaigning um, and national unions can use Trades Council's to help support their their particular work um, in, in areas um, and we can organise local public meetings, speakers um, on those the issues that they want us to raise. Um, trade union branches can affiliate to us for a small cost per member, it's not very much, um, and we in turn we affiliate to Trades Council organisations above us such as the Lancashire Wide Association of Trade Union Councils um, and that's quite a well-organised um, um, association and we are quite involved with them um, and we send we can also send delegates to regional Trades Council meetings and TUC meetings and conferences. It has to be said though over I suppose the last few decades um, Trades Council, Trades, Trades Union membership rather has declined and uh, especially in the private sector and smaller branches have disappeared or merged into larger um, trade unions, new trade unions um, and so the number of branches in local areas has declined but um, we still keep on um, on working on local issues. Uh, many of the issues raised in the past are still around today, low pay, insecure employment um, and of course these days climate change is a, is a big area of concern for trade unionists and of course as I say we have a particular interest in anti-racism work and are involved in um, joining, uh, joining rallies and demos and organising coaches to such events. 
Uh, Lancaster and Morecambe is, um, <coughs> is a merger of from quite a while ago of Lancaster, Morecambe and Hesham Trades Councils um, but um, we still have a small committed membership from unions such as the UCU, RMT, NEU, NUJ, uh, Unite, Unite Community <coughs> and we're still around organising uh, public meetings and uh, going on rallies, supporting demos um, and supporting other local trade unionists in on their campaign issues. Um, um, well, I hope that gives you a little bit of background about our organisation. Um, thank you. Thank you. Clive Runshaw, Police and Crown Commissioner for Lancashire, wanted to send Mayday greetings and solidarity for my friends and comrades on what is a very special but very different May Day this year. It's special because it gives us the opportunity to recognise some of the amazing work that is being done to protect us in these dark days. But obviously different because we have to social distance rather than gather as we would normally do. As we all know, May Day International Workers' Day is about a celebration of working class culture. It's a commemoration to the, the struggles and protection that the trade union movement has given to workers through generations against the excesses of the capitalist system. And we're seeing that now in starker detail than probably ever before. You know, we can recognise the heroes, the people that are sacrificing, sometimes giving the ultimate sacrifice in the line of their work, protecting us and protecting the community. I am talking, of course, about the, the health workers in our wonderful NHS. I'm talking about the key workers in the emergency services, ambulance, fire, police, the local authorities, the transport workers, and also the volunteers working in all our communities across Lancashire. There is some amazing work going on now and we need to recognise that actually people are stepping up and giving that dedication, support and protection for us in, in these difficult times. The irony, of course, is the people that we are most dependent upon now across the whole of the public sector are the very people that have suffered the most through the 10 years of austerity. The health service that was stripped to the bone, that was already operating over capacity, under-resourced. Can we remember how the Tory MPs cheered when they prevented the pay rise to our nurses just four years ago? You know, and the irony, of course, now they're out on the streets, clapping their hands, supporting the health workers when health workers are dying to protect them. You know, the support that we're getting now, like I said, throughout the whole of the public sector, the public sector that has been stripped to the bone, the public sector where they have been systematically cut year on year for the past 10 years, they have been the victims of austerity, a failed ideological economic exercise. For policing, Priti Patel came to the Police Federation conference and apologised for austerity, recognising the mistake that it was. Now, of course, they're all dependent upon the very workers that they have been scapegoating for the last 10 years in a failed exercise. What we need to remember are the people that have got through these dark days, the people that have actually sacrificed themselves, the people that are actually stepping up to the plate, and also remember the people that have failed us, the people that failed to prepare, the people that failed in terms of the investment within the public sector. They failed on PPE, they have failed on ventilators, they have failed on testing, they have failed in every decision that they have taken so far. So remember the workers, but remember the Tory government that have failed you over the last few months and will continue to fail you again. Once this is over, 
and they come with the bill to pay for what the damage that they have done make sure that the people that pay the bill next time and if you remember last time with the the crisis created by bankers it's been the public sector and the ordinary workers that have been paying the bill make sure that the people paying the bill next time are not the very workers that have actually supported us through this we need the people that are not contributing to society the tax avoiders the tax evaders the people that are benefiting from society but paying the least to be the ones who pick up the tab no more austerity no more cutting the public sector we've lost too much already peace solidarity up to all the struggle goes on thank you hello everyone i'm a green party city councillor for marsh ward and a county councillor on lancashire county council in lancaster we've got a really strong tradition of coming together to celebrate and mark solidarity on May Day, to celebrate the achievements we've made in terms of workers' rights and to renew our determination to get better protection for all workers, locally, nationally and globally. And this year, we're marking May Day in such strange circumstances due to the coronavirus pandemic. Right today, we've got our workers in the health and social care sector and other vital services out there facing unprecedented and unnecessary risks. Our government failed us to be prepared for this pandemic, even though a pandemic of this nature was number one on the National Risks Register. So we've still got lots to do right now to campaign for PPE for all of our key workers, and then also to ensure that there's a really good system of contact tracing and case finding to stamp out any mini outbreaks of the virus as we move forward from lockdown. I just want to say before going on that I really am aware that some people will be feeling isolated today, anxious or worried about loved ones and families, either because they're at work or because of their medical conditions. And also we have people who are already grieving for people that they have lost. So our thoughts and warm wishes are with you all. But there have been some positives. We've seen the community come together in amazing ways. People talking to their neighbours that they haven't spoken to, running errands, doing shopping, and generally amazing acts of kindness. And also nature and wildlife is getting a break. So we've seen less cars on the road, less noise, a better environment, clean air. And I think it's really important that we try to embed those changes moving forward. As some of you know, I'm really uh, um, keen on campaigning for sustainable transport. And one thing I want to do is to make sure that the county council looks differently now at transport planning so that we make more space for cycling and walking. And we make sure those short journeys to work and to the shops and for our children going to school are safer and more comfortable. And it's been interesting to see how hard it is, is on some streets just to keep a social distance while cycling and walking. And then in terms of the bigger picture, we wanna make sure that we are prepared and we use this learning, that we don't waste this crisis when it comes to facing the bigger crisis of the climate. There's lots of talk about new ideas, new ways of doing things, universal basic income, for an example, so that we guarantee security, whatever the crisis is, for everyone, for all of our citizens, adults and children. So I just want to leave with a message of hope. We've seen fantastic response from people this year during this crisis. And I think we can all learn from it and take away the positives for the future. Just want to say thank you for everything that you're doing and whatever you're doing today, try and have a happy May Day. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kat Smith. I'm the MP for Lancaster and Fleetwood. I send solidarity greetings from the local Labour Party to today's May Day online event. As we commemorate May Day this year, we do so in incredibly difficult and unusual circumstances. 
Normally on May Day, myself and my Labour comrades are standing shoulder to shoulder, marching, sometimes with the sun beating down on our brow, sometimes we've battled through rain and wind. But we've always stood shoulder to shoulder with our trade union and labour movement comrades on May Day. And May Day is always an experience of what it really feels like to have solidarity. And I think this year, many of us will be feeling a great sense of isolation. So if you're listening uh, to today's May Day event online and are feeling that isolation, please know that our virtual solidarity is reaching out around every single one of us as we fight to remember the dead and fight for the living. Because just a few days ago, it was International Workers Memorial Day. And I think this year is particularly poignant because there are so many workers today that are going out, key workers, are working in our NHS and in our care service, emergency service workers, teachers, delivery drivers, transport workers. So many workers are going out and are risking their lives. And it is brought starkly home to us. And we remember why the trade union and labour movement fight for health and safety at work because nobody should go to work and not come home and equally nobody should go to work and contract deadly viruses because of a lack of PPE. So this year on May Day in this situation that we find ourselves in with coronavirus remember why it's so important to stand up and fight, fight for workers rights, fight for the PPE that our frontline workers need and whilst our government says it's coming or it's there, we know the reality on the front line is very different, difficult and different to what we are being told. So if you're working in one of those professions, organise in your trade union, encourage your colleagues to join the trade union, strengthen the labour movement so that next year we might have stronger trade unions, better rights at work, better pay in terms and conditions and all the things that those who've gone before us have fought for and won for us to have as our workplace rights. And as your local Labour MP, I'll be supporting you. Here I am virtually, but hopefully next year, standing shoulder to shoulder in solidarity and marking May Day. Hi everyone, happy May Day. Hope everyone's doing all right. Um, I'm gonna be singing a couple of songs and this first one um, I wrote last year around the XR uh, protest in London which I really wanted to go to, but I couldn't afford the train ticket because I was waiting to get paid from work. Um, so I wrote this song instead. I missed the revolution because I was waiting to get paid. And the train ticket prices were well of my race while I was swimming round in circles. My own anxiety. Take cause the world feels too intense Make music for the sake of it The pure feeling past the money shit Cause its power is immense If I sing with passion Forget about fashion Will everything make sense? I miss the revolution Cause it started to rain And I got a Facebook message Saying I'll do it another day But I went out anyway I used to think I was all bad Cause the world feels too intense 
Make music for the sake of it If you're feeling possibly shit Cause his power is immense If I sing with passion Forget about fashion Will everything make sense? Uh, so the next song I'm going to sing is called Get the Tories Out and I wrote it before the election last year. Um, someone came into the pub that I work at after the election and she looked at me and she was like, that song, you know, didn't work, did it? So um, yeah, I'm still singing it now and fingers crossed, you know, you never know. Mission chips will see Straight up us goes walking on grassroots community And it's the land of austerity With the posh boys at the wheel Time to throw them out the floor And teach them how to feel Cause we're paying fat fees For water down to Greece You can't sign on the door Cause you've gone and cut it all And we're the back one And we're like men every day We work to pay the rent Oh yeah, the tour Thank you for listening. Um, I'd like to thank all the performers. What a fantastic performance from everybody. And I'd like to thank all the speakers. A special big thank you to John Walsh, who put it all together. And I'd just like to say that if you're not in a union, then now's the time to join a union and keep fighting for your rights. Solidarity, keep fighting. <laughs>